Holy cow, everyone. Chegg is up 16.5% after hours. After being up 3% already in the normal trading session, up to over $50 a share. Now this is off of an earnings report, as we see, um, which brings this stock to a healthy, uh, if we're looking year-to-date, that's right, a very healthy up 12%. That's prior to this after hours move too, which is massive. So we're talking about uh, the stock being up pretty big this year. I mean, we're talking from their their low point. The things recovered after today, probably closer to 80%. That is insane um, to see for this stock. So let's look at these earnings and see why it went up. Uh, you see a non-GAAP EPS, a positive one of $0.22, cents, beats by $0.05. Cents. Again, I mentioned non-GAAP profitability does not matter much to me. GAAP profitability makes more sense to me. So GAAP EPS of negative $0.05, cents beats by $0.05. Cents. So a narrow, um, narrowly profitable uh, quarter, nearly, I guess, even for the most part, but a little bit uh, of a loss there. Nothing insane. Revenues, though, of $131.59 million which is a positive 35% year over year. Very, very big for them. Beats by 12 million on that, million on that aspect. That's a very big beat. Uh, if we're talking about you know revenue of, of this amount, 12 million is a lot. That's a big beat. That's one-tenth the amount. Um, yeah, 10% beat is it's big. It's big. Um, <clears throat> so Chegg gains after topping quarter one estimates and reporting a substantial increase in domestic and global subscribers. So... As I suspected with this, um, I had one of two thoughts on this matter. I, I could see some professors just going away from doing books in general, but the other ones that required books, with this new wave of online schooling, Chegg should benefit big time because of it, because of the fact that people really don't want to have a physical book for an online class. It's just, it's not, it's cumbersome, it's just a waste, um, in my opinion at least. So I think more people are going to go online, they might choose Chegg. Um, to buy books, they can buy books digitally, whatever they need to do. Um, because they can't get it at the bookstore, that's for sure. So they can't get it there. It's wild the amount of people that actually purchase their textbooks um, at the school bookstore. It's a waste of money. It, gosh, they, they rake you over the coals for those. Much better to get it on a Chegg, and I think people might be realizing that now. So this could be the turn uh, for a while now for Chegg. It could be just a massive thing for them in the future. Uh, company set guidance ahead uh, of expectations saying it's quarter two revenue of 135 million to 137 million versus a 118 million number so another massive quarter is what they're expecting big stuff and we're talking about most of that's going to be doing during the summer semester right that's that seems crazy guidance crazy good guidance um, and I think that's why you see the stock going up uh, so we'll take a look uh, obviously at this this earnings report look at them they gave us the good stuff. They gave us the good stuff. Uh, so from highlights here, obviously they're going to lead us off with the their leading direct to student connected learning platform. They have a large addressable market with compelling market trends, high growth and high margin model. Debatable whenever you're not profitable, but just saying it could be high margin. That's for sure. Competitive moat, uh, given brand reach data and proprietary content. Cool. So. They've reached 3.9 million Chegg subscribers, 29% uh, service subscribers, uh, year year over year growth, 29% growth there, uh, 15 million Chegg platform unique visitors in an average month, so 15 million uh, monthly average users is really what they could have said. Don't know why they say it like that. 31% uh, Chegg services revenue growth year over year, 30% adjusted EBIT, EBIT uh, margin, and they're voted the Fortune's best small and medium workplaces. Uh, Workplaces in technology, workplaces for parents. All those small, medium. Oh my gosh, they're uh, good to work as a parent there. I guess I don't know how that has anything to do with anything, but what can I say? Um, so 2.9 million Chegg subscribers is up 35% year over year. Revenue is up 35% year over year, and uh, 235 million Chegg study content views. So. Um, they're all about supporting the employees, students, and community, um, setting our team to remote uh, to work remotely, and we're able to uh, seamlessly continue providing Chegg products because, again, this is a company that was smart as far as the technology is concerned about it. They they are already future-proof in the aspect that they, they did a lot of their work from home. Most of their employees did. So they 
really did fine during this. Um, they extended additional support to employees, including in-home care, uh, giving caregiving support, um, and new online services for both their physical and mental health, including online wellness programs and entertainment. Interesting. For students and communities, uh, they're helping underserved students in partnership with Verizon by providing free check study pack subscriptions and ramping efforts for Thinkful with uh, expanded curriculum, scholarships, and lower pricing to prepare students with skills for a uh, post-pandemic environment. Obviously a lot more digitally focused as opposed to traditional. We are supporting the communities uh, where our offices are located with donations to Second Harvest Food Bank of Silicon Valley and programs to support student facing nonprofits. Uh, to date, we have committed approximately $1 million to help students in local communities impacted by the pandemic. That's pretty wild stuff. Um, average student age for them is around uh, 25, uh, and ar approximately 40% are employed. I mean, I say only, but think about that. People working and going to school is tough. I'm in the same boat. Um, I mean, I work 60, 50 to 60 hours a week, um, and I am also uh, going to school full-time as well. So it, it can be tough. I get it. But uh, you need to support me because it's harder to be a student. That's pathetic, okay, right? You just deal with it. Um, the facing mounting costs, 37% don't graduate. Well, to be honest... That's not necessarily the fault. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it, but if 37% don't graduate, it's because they're busy partying. I'm just being 100% honest with you. A majority of that percentage is going to be people who aren't caring about their education, so they're just doing it, and then they flunk out. So uh, trust me, I, I wouldn't necessarily try to put that as a, a, a marketing point, but they did. Um, 30000 debt owed by 2018 graduates. Yeah, obviously, that's that's for sure a thing. I mean, no doubt student debt's a big thing, but it is a choice factor as well. 41% um, of recently graduates of uh, recent graduates are underemployed. I'd like to know what they mean by recent graduates, but um, obviously they show a link there. But it all depends. Job market's kind of sucky right now too, for sure. But it will be good afterwards. Okay, I promise you. Uh, there are large and expanding market opportunities. 36 million U.S. university and high school students, uh, 18 million uh, Canada, uh, Australia, U.K. secondary and tertiary students. So 54 million total students can benefit from CHEG. The initial expansion in international markets, um, as you see, is what they're doing there. They're getting there. 3.9 million CHEG service subscribers in 2019. So CHEG games provide overwhelming value. Uh, with online, on-demand, personalized, adaptive, affordable, and backed by human help support there. Check is well known. Um, so, unaided awareness, as they're going to mention, they're obviously one of the most known um, for this. I mean, obviously people do a lot of stuff for for school work as, as percentage, but you see 87% of college students have heard of a check service. This is just a poll. I mean... I don't know if that's necessarily relevant, but they're a well-known thing. Obviously, people it, a lot of it's word of mouth spread for sure, because they do provide a very good service. Um, they do provide a good service. I'll give them credit for it. Uh, so obviously, with their platform, they've got Chegg Study. Um, <clears throat> it's a homework help learning service with a library of 37 million pieces of content. Chegg Writing. Uh, this is a leading provider of online writing tools. Creates bibliographies. Uh, checks grammar errors and plagiarism. They have a math solver, which shows a step-by-step -step math problem solver. Pretty cool there. You just give it, you know, give it a problem. It'll do it for you, and it'll show you how to do it. And they have check tutors, obviously. And for skills, they have Thinkful. Um, these are just really working about teaching you online skills. Um, could be anything really, but it's all about uh, another form of education, really. So, um, textbooks. Obviously, they offer textbooks as well to rent or uh, buy print textbooks or e-textbooks. E-textbooks are a big thing right now. Um, Chegg is delivering strong outcomes. Chegg, Chegg study helps me understand my school work better. 90% uh, said yes. So that's Chegg study helps me get better grades. 92% said yes. I don't know necessarily the point of adding this in an investor presentation. Seems like it just, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, but they have rapid growth as you see. 
um, in service subscribers that number just it's fast growing and again some people might show a chart uh, you know going from you know your, your left to right um, going along the horizontal axis but instead this one is, is a little bit different they're they're doing things different but for revenue you see massive massive growth uh, annualized uh, growth rate of 37 percent from 2015 to 2019 is massive this company's got a lot going for it um, Guidance is going to be a little bit higher than they did this quarter. Uh, service revenue a little bit higher than this quarter. Margin higher even. Uh, just at EBITDA, they're expecting more money even brought in there. That's pretty big. Um, then if you look for the appendix, nothing exciting here, but um, we're more interested in the balance sheet from here. This company's got a lot going for it, but if we look at the balance sheet, obviously, um, so this is in thousands, so uh, 359 million dollars in current assets that's versus 387 uh, if we're talking about last quarter three months ago um, total current investments really the same as what they had uh, 807 million so total current assets right now of 1.5 million nothing or 1.5 billion I should say um, nothing different from three months ago really nothing's really changed total current liabilities of a hundred million uh, dollars definitely their total current assets outweigh that massively. Total liabilities of just one billion. So again, they have pretty much five billion or five hundred million extra dollars in cash than they do in terms of uh, liabilities. I really like the balance sheet of this company. They just need to work on profitability, and they will get there. As we talk about a growing profit margin for them, um, right now it could be hurt, definitely painful for them, but. This company's got a lot going for it, and they're going to be a major thing as we talk about even the expansion of digital uh, online schooling. Uh, they're pretty much going to be the leader here, and th this current situation is a very big opportunity for them, and the management's taking a good job, taking advantage of it. This company's doing a great job. Um, they're the leader, really, in online textbook sales. I mean, I mean, they offer services to help students as well, especially with all these students going online right now. A lot of people need extra help. Chegg seeks to benefit a lot from this. So Chegg stock is, is an interesting one. I mean, valuation, it's hard to provide value on this stock right now if you think about it. Um, trading in a market cap of $5.4 billion, though, um, when the company brings in $500 million in revenue, again, that's it's steep. I don't think there's any denying um, it's steep for this company right now. Um, I don't know if the shares are necessarily at fair value. Uh, if you were to say, I mean, this company IPO'd in 2013, just, I, I don't say you could say there's fair value for this company right now. It's always hard to say when you look at the P ratio, but the earnings were fantastic, and this company just, it's going to do great things. I just don't know necessarily what the share price looks like, in my opinion. So I'm not currently going to be uh, investing in this stock, but um, definitely it's worth taking a look at if you're interested.